Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Um, it looks like we only have a couple people here. I hope that is because it's Friday and everybody's making a lot of money instead of they just didn't hear or can't get in again. Um, feel free in the chat to shoot me any questions that you have. We're going to go over some of the features today. Um, or it's a extension off of a walkthrough part one. Um, and then we're going to go through, like I said, we're going to go through some of the features, what to do, um, and all that good stuff. So we're going to start with some of our new green screen features. Um, are you guys fairly familiar with the green screen features as it is? Okay, so it looks like uh, we have some green screen newbies. Um, let me go ahead and pull up the software and then we can get started on kind of the existing green screen stuff into some of our newer features. One second for that to load. So with the green screen, you have a couple of options um, with regards to how to apply the backgrounds. So you can have it set up um, that you have just one background for the for every photo that's taken. Um, you can have it set up with the green screen overlays that the backgrounds or the overlays will coordinate with the backgrounds. So if you have specific, let's say if, um, we used Vegas because we were there, so we had um, you know. A, a, background of our hotel and then the overlay said the hotel's name it would go over the people. So you can have it where it coordinates with each of the backgrounds. You can have it so that the guests can choose their background for each of the photos. So for each photo, say they take choose their background, they take the first photo, they would walk back up to the screen, select their background for the second photo. You can also have it set up as auto cycle is so that if you have say 12 backgrounds in your folder, It'll use number one for the first photo, number two for the second photo, all the way through, it gets through all 12. So the first, let's say you have a strip of four photos, the, it'll have three different layouts, essentially. So the first one will have the first four photos, or the first four backgrounds, the second one would have the second four backgrounds, and then it's going to go back to number one. So those are kind of the, the big kind of background selection options. You can also do a custom color. So if you want to use a blue or a pink screen or whatever, you would just set in the RGB values and that's going to allow you to custom background color. That also works if your green screen is um, the lighting is making the color look a little weird to the software. You can change it so that it's just a little bit different and pull and still not have any issues with it pulling. You can also, if you want, the live view is built in. Um, so when you enable green screen, it's going to show the background, it's going to show the overlay, and they can position themselves. If you want, you can um, disable that if you're using a DSLR, or you could use a webcam for the live view. So if you don't want to use your DSLR for that, you want to use a webcam for the live view, you can do that as well. Does anybody have any questions on that piece of the green screen? This one's going to be for social booth. We haven't scheduled any photo booth connected trainings yet. And if we have time yeah. at the at the end, Johnny, I'd be happy to answer any photo booth connected questions for you. Okay, 
it doesn't look like we have any questions on the green screen basics just yet. Let's go ahead and close out of that and get back to my, my examples here. So we now have um, like built in last year, it's called Scalent. And what it allows you to do is take the photo that your that your camera's taking and shrink it down. So in this example, you can see Mike's kind of in the corner um, of the photo. So I think we have him at like a 12% scale right now. So the photo is 12% of what it was. And then you can all tell it exactly where to put that photo. Um, so we've moved him down. I want to say it's like a thousand pixels and left 200 or something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers for this one. Um, but you also tell it where to place that photo. So for this one, he's scared in the corner. Um, at the expo, we did an example where you're running from a roulette ball where it shrinks you down and puts you right on that roulette wheel. Um, we've done like King Kong's hand where he's holding the ball. Um, so it's, it's actually a really cool example. I did um, a hot air balloon one for this one once where we put every, we shrunk everybody down to like 60% and put them in a hot air balloon. And then in the auto cycle background, it looked like the balloon was moving because it was the first background, they were on the ground. The second background, they were in the air, but you could see the tops of the trees. The third one and fourth one were clouds. So it looked like the balloon was actually moving through the air and they were in the balloon because we used the balloon as the overlay. So the basket was in front of them. That one turned out pretty cool. Does anybody have any questions on the scale in place or see a fun way that we could use it? You guys gotta help me out here. This is gonna be extremely boring if I'm only talking to myself. Yes, they are all online. We have um, an email that went out earlier this week with the with the last video, um, and then we have them in the Knowledge Center, and we have them on our YouTube channel as well. We do not have um, anything for anyone to share asset files. We tried that and then there were a bunch of viruses that were spread around. You can absolutely do um, something on our Facebook group. Um, if you want to open up a Dropbox file and then use something like drop it to me and everybody can submit it there and then everybody can have access as well. That might be something. Um, that's worthwhile to set up, but that's not something that we're going to sponsor again because of the issues previously. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to our next green screen feature. And this one's kind of cool. This is called interactive green screen. And the way that this one is a word is it's going to use whatever background you select um, for the first photo. So you can see we're using that, that in sky for the background for the first photo. After it takes the first photo, it's gonna use that as the background for the next photo. So you can see this first picture we've got with the red lightsaber now becomes the background for that second photo. So you're actually taking a picture with yourself. It ends up being a cool. Um, I don't know what people have done with this. We know people were really excited when we first released it. There's somebody that asked for it and Mike went, hey, that sounds kind of cool. Let's, let's see if we can do that. Um, and within a couple of days, he added in the software. So I think he just wanted to play a little bit. Um, is there anything that you guys can think of that would be fun with this one? And this one I'm just not very new.
No, these would be just static photos. Yes, you could have somebody that could change change outfits. Um, we do have the pause between shots in social as well now. Um, sure. So we do have the pause between shots where you can allow them to take a break, get changed, um, come back at the screen again, and then that would um, and then that would allow you to to uh, trigger it again once they're all ready. So it's not. A 10 second countdown where they have to really, really move quickly. It gives you a little bit of flexibility there, too. Great idea. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is our Marioki booth. Um, so this one ended up <laughs> really cool. So you can have a pre live preview. You can see we've made it kind of small and in the corner so that we can see it. And then what you're going to do is create a lyrics file, and then you're going to attach the song as well. So you can have it set up so that no matter how many things you have in the folder, they can page through and select the one that they want. So you can have four or five songs in there, and then they can select whatever one would work best for them. And then that's when it's going to play. So with Dub Smash getting huge, we wanted to uh, be able to capitalize on that as well. If this is something that you're looking to do, um, the lyric files aren't hard to create. We use, uh, I think it's lrccreator.com, and you just put in the lyrics and then you hit the button when it goes to the next page. So it's going to automatically then sequence it for you. Or um, I just googled for LRC files and the song name, and usually you can find some out there that are already created. The only thing you want to do, want to make sure with that is that you're using the same version of the song so that it's not from like a live album where the where the timing's going to be off. You want to make sure that you're using that same version where the timing would be the same. Has anybody done a Marioki event? How did they go, Jeffrey? What was the reaction that you got? Oh, I can see it being huge in the mitzvahs. Wow, Jeffrey, if you want to take some pictures, I'd love to see how that turns out. For those of you on the phone, Jeffrey said that on September 20th, they're taking it to a full video sized screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. The next thing we're going to talk about is the photo booth cloud. So we um, started this a couple years ago, to be honest with you. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to put a unique code on all of the photos. 
then on your website, you can have a widget where folks will be able to go to your website, put that code in, and they'll have access to everything that was done during that session. So they would have access to the individual photos, to the photo strip, to the animated GIF. If you're doing um, video where it pops up and asks for a video after the photo session, and they hit yes, that video will be in that same one. Um, so you can see the example here. They, we've got the QR code, we've got the unique, unique access code. Um, all of this is going to be contained within your data file, so you know exactly what photos are out there, you know what code they've got. So if someone um, and says that, hey, you know, my, my isn't working, or I can't read this, is this an I or an L, um, you have access to all of that information within the data file. They can also then from their screen, once they pull up their, um, their photo, they can share it. You can have it via email, Facebook, Twitter. It can go to YouTube. Um, you can also hook it up to a photo moto. And when it uploads to the cloud, it'll also upload to your photo moto account. And they can go there and order the photos. So if they, if you want to, um, you know, just sell them, you don't want to use Smug Mug because the F Everybody can access all the photos, whereas this can only access the ones that they have the codes for. Um, so Photomoto is set up it's, um, an e-commerce site where they can order the photo, they can get it any size, they print it and just mail it to them. So that takes all that out of your hands and you don't have to worry about it. So it's actually a really, really cool, uh, it's a really cool set setup. What you'll be able to do, you can see here's the widget, you can change all of the, the look of it, but you'll get the code at the bottom and that's all that you need to do in order to put it on your website. So once you do, it'll look something like this, um, where they will enter the code and design your page so that it says enter your photo code below. Um, and then when they do get access to it, you'll be able to see on the left here, they can see all of the individual photos. That's the animated GIF right there. The videos down here at the bottom, and then they've got the sharing options and the buy button. So the buy button will take them right to that Fomoto inter interface, and they'll be able to buy that photo. When they click the buy button, it's going to pop up and allow you, to, you would be able to customize this as well. Um, but they can do different sizes. You can see they can do cards, they can do e cards image rights, and all of that is customizable based on your settings. And then that just goes right into your pocket. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on the Photo Booth Cloud at all? This is the only thing in the software that has an additional cost. So this is $9.99 a month, um, and that's more for the hosting and stuff like that. They will not be able to download all of the images because they only have access to the ones that they have their code for. Any code is automatically generated by the system and it gets placed on the photo depending on where you tell it to um, or it's in the data file and you can use a QR code as well. So if you just want them to be able to scan the QR code, you know, it'll look exactly the same once they get to the site. That is not me in the picture. I wish. If you were at the expo, I was the one with the purple hair. <laughs> right now it's blue and pink. Jeffrey, let me double check on getting a link. I'm not positive. I want to say no, but I'm not positive. So let me double check on that and I will shoot you an email after the training.
Hello, guys. That was a little embarrassing. I'm trying to get my presentation back. Let me know if you can hear me. hear me at all? Okay, cool. Sorry about that, guys. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Let's move on then. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the next thing I wanted to take you guys through. Um, oh, can you see the slow motion? Not at all yet. Not yet. Anything now? There we go. So we're going to talk about slow motion next. So this one was something that we were really excited about to be able to add in. Um, you can do it two different ways. So we have the Rebel, anything that's an I series, so your T3I or, or your T5I can do slow motion. So you're going to set it for 60 frames per second. And what that's going to do is it's going to record the video. And then at the end, once that's done, it's going to process it and manually slow down that video. We can also use the SunTech camera that you see on the screen on the right. This guy is so little, it's so cute. Um, it's maybe like a one by one cube. And it's the slow motion camera, you want the lens as well. Um, that's actually going to record in slow motion. So there's no processing time at all on that one. Um, so it's gonna record, it's gonna pop up. You can share it, the videos like you can anything else. Um, you can do it email or Facebook. That's what you can do with videos. Um, the one thing you want to watch out for is the slow motion videos end up kind of giant because you're taking, you know, a five second video and you're slowing it down. And then that allows it to, uh, it ends up as like this 40 second video. So it can get pretty, pretty big for Facebook sharing or for email sometimes even. Do you guys have any questions about slow motion or have you played with that at all or done any of that yet? I'll be honest, I did not get the slow-mo thing at first. Mike said that we were adding in slow-mo, and I was like, really, Mike? Okay, let's try it. And then I was like, these are so silly. And then once you, once I started playing with it, I was like, this is so much fun. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to tell you guys about is going to be the surveys and data collection options for you. Um, so this is very big in nonprofits. So it allows you to set up six questions. Um, you can have it ask for an email address. You can have it as just a blank where they can type in an answer. You can have it as a yes, no question. And you can set it up so that it's multiple choice, so they can have four different answers that they can select from. So this is very good for your nonprofits or for your corporate events. We even had um, people that are using it to get what department somebody's from when they're at a corporate event. So are you in HR? Are you in accounting? Um, and using those those four different uh, quick select A B C D buttons. Um, for that. So it's a very cool feature. It gives you a lot of information. Um, if you are collecting or if you have email set up so that they can email them the, themselves their photos, 
you can have it ask for an email address here in the survey option, and then it'll also pop up when they hit that email button so they don't have to enter, enter it twice. Um, so that's very cool when it comes to um, collecting information. Like I said, we see it a lot at nonprofits. And then for you, if you are collecting this information, you can then mark it to them. They've given you their email address. You can send them stuff. So, hey, your events are all, your event photos are online. Do you want more information on having me at your event? Click here. These are all people that you can then market to um, and hopefully make some more money off of them. One thing that I did want to point out is when you're in the email section, and this is not only just for the surveys, it's also for the actual email, you can customize these four buttons at the bottom. So I think we have AOL, Gmail, Yahoo maybe, um, those are all customizable. So you can add in, if you're doing a corporate event, you can add in their corporate extension, and then it's just quick and easy. They just enter the first part, hit the at wherever, and then they're done. So let's show you the setup screen. So you can see this first one, you can do a title, um, the age question, since nothing here on the right is checked, it's going to be just uh, type it in. Your favorite sport we have set up as uh, multiple choice. Are you over 21 as a yes and no? And then enter your email address as the email button. Um, you can also do a disclaimer pop up. Um, so if you have, you can do a text file or a JPEG or a PNG image if you want to make sure that it stays pretty. Um, so you could, you would just click an enable disclaimer and then either link out to the file here. And then you can choose whether to show it before or after sharing. If you show it before sharing and they hit no, so can we use your images for our marketing purposes, and they hit no, they can't share that photo then. So that's kind of cool for, are you over 21? Have you been drinking underage? Um, do you really want to put this photo online? Are you sure you want to share this photo? Um, or even for um, getting access to be able to use that photo. Has anybody done anything like that before where they needed to have a disclaimer or a survey? Okay, so we have a few more things I wanted to talk through with you. Um, these are kind of the fun extras, as I call them. Um, external devices. So we have our triggers section in the software. So if we go over one more, you can see the triggers here. So you can set it up using a fidget or something similar. Um, that external command one and two, you can set it up so that something triggers it, say you wanted to use like a USB button instead of touch the screen, um, you can set it up that way. You can set it up so that they have to, um, you know, stomp on something on the floor or something like that to start it. You can even go so far as to have it trigger lights so that they turn on when somebody starts the booth. Um, we have one gentleman who's using it to trigger wind machines. So when somebody starts the booth, the wind starts blowing and they can, you know, for slow-mo. Um, so there's a lot of really fun things that you can do with the external triggers and the fidgets. Um, I'm not going to tell you I'm an expert at setting that up, but if you do want some help, you can email us at support. We've got one of our guys is really good at the external stuff and writing that code. And then the last thing I have for you is using that same trigger screen, you can set it up so that there has to be a money trigger um, before they can do it. You can do it with card readers, you can do it with bill acceptors, um, anything like that. So you can set it up so that it's a permanent install um, and then they just swipe their credit card, it's 
I've seen them for four or five dollars around here. Um, and then that will actually be what triggers the start of the sequence. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, again, we have step by step tutorials out there. Um, but uh, I'm not an expert at that either. So um, shoot us an email if you do try and set that up. You're having some troubles. So that was the last part of the walkthrough um, that I wanted to go through. Does anybody have any questions like kind of what we talked about or some social booth functionality that you wanted to talk about? I will, Johnny. Okay, if we don't have any questions on social, I guess we can answer the photo booth connected questions that you guys have. Are you asking if you can swipe on the screen to get to more photos or left to right when the photo is previewed? That is not something that's possible just now, but I know Mike's been playing. I can't guarantee anything, but I know he has been playing around a bit. Are you looking to um, decrease the size further? Johnny, let me talk to Mike about, um, about the higher quality. I know we had a lot of people that couldn't share, um, so we did increase it. So let me see if there's a way that we can make it so that you can select kind of the sizing. Brittany, do you have the server software installed on a PC and you're running that and then the app on the iPad? And then you're adding photos after it started? If you're on the same network, I would look at if there's any firewalls that are blocking you. Um, we actually shut down our window firewalls when we were doing that. Um, and then I would look at some of the routers have firewalls built in. So sometimes that can stop it as well. Also on the PC, check and see um, if it's pulling in the photos. So you'll have your event photos. I don't think I have PVC. Uh, let me see if I've got that installed and I can show you right where the photo would be. Ah, I do. Okay. So if you go into the C drive, if you haven't changed the save location, go into the C drive and then photo booth connected iOS Android and then your event name that you're trying. And then if you go into the iPad folder and images, let me make sure that's, I don't know if I just don't have any in here. Oh, it's because I didn't use an iPad for this one. Sorry. Um, so if you go into there, you can see if there's anything in here, it's not, it's finding the photos and it's resizing them and the issue is with it connecting to the iPad. If there's nothing in there, then it's not pulling in the photos and shoot us a message at support. We'll help you out. I don't believe that should be a problem. Um, they're all so different, I can't guarantee it though. Yes, you can share videos on PVC. It'll be um, a photo. It won't actually play the video. 
but it'll have a little play icon to show it's a video and then you can share via email or Facebook. No, not currently. You cannot select multiple photos for emailing. It's one by one. Yes, you can run the FTP simultaneously with PBC and cloud. That being said, I would make sure that you have a pretty powerful computer. Yeah, I would think you would be able to use a hotspot for, for PVC. Um, as long as it's, as long as um, you're getting a pretty good connection. I know when I tried to do that, like I said, when we were at Vegas at the um, South Point Hotel, we were kind of in a corner where phone reception was a little wonky and it kept disconnecting. So you want to make sure that you're still able to get pretty good, a pretty good connection. You guys have me for 15 more minutes. Is there anything else I can answer for you? While you guys are typing, I am going to show you sketch booth real quick. Um, so this is the one that allows you where you can draw on the screen. You can select the color and the pen thickness. And then you can also add in digital props as well. Um, so for this one, it, we actually, um, I want to say about a month or two ago, Mike put in a monthly option. So if it's something that you guys were thinking about before, but because of the cost was kind of not so sure, you can do it month by month. So if you have an event, pay for it. If you don't, you don't. Um, so I did just want to bring that up that that's now an option for you. Johnny, I should have something for you later in the week about the higher quality images. Jeffrey, the one with the drawing and the props is going to be sketch booth. Oh, it's Friday. The holiday is really throwing me off. I'll try and see if I can catch them today, um, but I can't promise that. A 70 inch touch screen. How heavy is that bad boy? Thirteen hundred actually isn't horrible for that size. Great find. Wow, $4,000, that was a great find. <laughs> Jeffrey, 
That's correct, Johnny. So it's going to watch the watch folder and then downsize the photo and then broadcast that over to your iPad. Otherwise, we found that the amount of data required um, was just excessive. Jeffrey, I bet that's going to be a really cool setup. I'd love to see photos. Yeah, I'm think Johnny, I'm thinking that it might be a way just to build in a button that says, you know, like share original size and Mike would be able to have it then skip that resizing or, or pull from a different folder. Well, did you guys have any other questions or, um, you know, do you want your 10 minutes back to go make a couple more sales calls and make some money? Okay, guys, you have a very good day. Um, like normal, a survey is going to pop up once you cancel out of the meeting. Please, please, please be honest with me. I know I'm not perfect, and um, I do want to kind of improve, get you the information that you need. Um, with the training, there's also going to pop up and tell you where some of it, uh, some of the additional trainings. If you do have a request that you would like um, to see in a future training, 